Christ. Hallelujah, beloved in Christ. This is another day. Our Lord Jesus Christ, the King of glory, he has given us a breath. Beloved, without wasting time, let us pray. Our Lord Jesus Christ, the owner of life, this is another wonderful day that you have given to your children around the whole world. It is your mercy and goodness that you have given us a life and you are the owner of life. We appreciate you for giving us a bread. You are so awesome. You are wonderful, merciful. Unto the O Lord, with you, all things are possible. We thank you for another day that we are still alive. It is by your grace. It is by your mercy. Unto the O Lord, with you, all things are possible. Spirit of the living God, I am a clay. Speak through me and give me the utterance to share your word with your people. Thank you, thank you, thank you. We give all the glory to our Lord Jesus Christ, the owner of life. We appreciate in Jesus Christ, your mighty name, I pray. Amen. Hallelujah. Our God is so unique. Our God is so wonderful. Today he has given us a word and the title of his message is God's people must live a holy life. Hallelujah. So without wasting time, let us hear his word. James 2 and the verses are 19 to 20. Let's hear the word of God. Oh, we give him all his glory. Hallelujah. James 2.19 says, You believe that there is one God. You do well. Even the demons believe and they tremble. 20. But do you want to know, oh, foolish man, that faith without weight is dead. Beloved, this is a question mark. It, the scripture is asking, do you want to know faith without works is foolish? Beloved, how is your faith? Is your faith a weaker faith? Is your faith like Abraham? Is your faith strong? This is a question mark for you and I. And we know without faith, it is impossible to please our God. So this morning, the scripture is asking you and I, how is your faith? Is it solid or is a weak faith? And a faith without works is telling us is dead. So beloved, our faith must work the work of God. And what is the work of God? The work of God is to believe in our Lord Jesus Christ. He is the owner of faith. Hallelujah. Glory be to him. He alone is worthy to be praised. Hallelujah. Beloved, let us continue. The next scripture is James 1.22. Let us hear his word. But be a doer of the word and not a hearer only, deceiving yourselves. Beloved, here is telling us the doer of the word that when you believe the word of our Lord Jesus Christ, you must put it into practice. You must witness it. You must evangelize it. People have to know the word. People have to hear the gospel. So by doing this, you are doing the work of God. So James 1.22 
is asking us. We shouldn't be the hearers of the word, but rather to do the work of the word by sharing it, by telling people, those who have not heard the word of God or the gospel, but in doing so, you share the word, you evangelize, and the gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ. People will hear it. It is the only thing that man needs in his life. Hallelujah. Oh, we give him all his glory. We continue. We go to Proverbs. Proverbs 20, Proverbs 15, and the verse is 9. Beloved, let us hear the word of God. What's a word that he has given to us? Proverbs 15 and the verse is 9. Let us hear the word of God. The way of the wicked is an abomination unto the Lord. But he who loves him, who follow righteousness. Beloved, if you don't know the word of God, it is an abomination unto him. He created you. He wants to know his word, his ways. So he's telling us in Proverbs 15, 19, that if you don't know the word of God, it is an abomination because you don't know your creator, his ways, his word. And the word will transform your life. So beloved, the word must be in you. You have to know the word of God that transforms life. Hallelujah. Oh, what a master. We continue. He is so faithful. He is everlasting God. And he said, all things will pass away, but my word will never pass away. We continue with 1 John and the verses 2, 4. Let us hear his word. Hallelujah. He who say, I know him, and does not keep his commandment, is a liar. And the truth is not in him. Beloved, what is the truth? The truth is about our Lord Jesus Christ. If you know him, his word must be in you. His word must abide in you. That's why he is telling us. He who says, I know him and does not keep his commandment. Beloved, his commandment must be in you. As it is said in the Bible, John 14 and the verses 15, he said, if you love me, this is by our Lord Jesus Christ. If you love me, thou shalt keep my commandments. So beloved, if you love him, he is the truth. His word must abide in you. So this morning, he is telling us, if you love him, you have to keep his commandment. And if you don't do it, you become a liar. That means you don't know him. Oh, what a master. We continue. Same John and the verse is three. Same John chapter three and the verse is 10. Let us hear the word of God. In this, the children of God and the children of devil are manifest. Who's, whoever does not practice righteousness is not of God, nor he who does not love his brother. Beloved, if you don't practice righteousness, you are not a child of God. Beloved, we have to practice righteousness. And righteousness is for who? Righteousness, righteousness is God. He is so righteousness. And if you don't do this, it means 
you does not love your brother. The brother that you see, you hate him, and you say you love God. How can that be? Oh, it is never done. So God is telling us this morning that we have to practice righteousness. Righteousness belongs to God, the almighty Jehovah. Hallelujah. We continue with Hebrew chapter 12 and the verses 4, 14. Let us hear the word of God. Hebrew 12, 14 says, pursue peace with all people and holiness without which no one will see the Lord. Beloved, we all must practice holiness and also peace. When you have inner peace, you have everything. Who is in control of our life? It's our Lord Jesus Christ. So he is telling us, we have to pursue peace with all people. That means we have to live with all people in peaceful and also practice holiness. And without doing that, we will not see our Lord Jesus Christ. Hallelujah. We continue. We serve a mighty God. Our next scripture is First Peter 1.15. Let us hear the word of God. First Peter 1.15 says, But as he who call you is holy, you also be holy in all conduct. Beloved, we should be holy in all conduct. Our Lord Jesus Christ is so, so holy. So you and I, we should do what our master is telling us. He is commanding us to be holy. And the more we do that, oh, our character will change. Our conduct will change for people to see that these people are the children of the most high God. Hallelujah. What a master we serve. What a king of glory unto him. There is the inner peace. Let us continue. In Amos, the book of Amos. And it's Amos 5. And let us see the word of God. Amos 5, 14. Let's hear the word. Seek good and not evil, that you may live. So the Lord God of the host will be with you as he have spoken. Beloved, he said we have to seek good, not, not evil. Evil intention belongs to Satan. We should hate evil. And also, God wants us to do good so that our Lord, God of the host, will be with us. He is telling us, we know what is good and what is bad. So this morning, it is a privilege to do what the master is telling us. Beloved, let us obey God and do his commandment. By doing this, we become the most high. We become the children of the most high. He alone is worthy. He alone is faithful. Oh, beloved. What he commands you and I, we have to do it. We give him all his glory. Our last scripture is taken from Psalm 24 and the verse is four, the verse is three. Let us hear the word of God. What a mighty Lord. What a mighty master. The one who knows you and I. Let's hear his word. Hallelujah. Psalm 24, the verse is three. Who may ascend into the hill of the Lord? Or who may stand in his holy place? Beloved, this is the question mark. Who can ascend into the hill of the Lord? 
you and I. We have to do the right thing so that we can stand before our Lord Jesus Christ when the trumpet sound. Beloved, it is a choice to accept our Lord Jesus Christ as your personal savior. So he is asking us, who has a clean hands and a pure heart? So beloved, is our hands clean before the Lord? Is our heart pure before him? This is a question mark that he is asking in Psalm 24, verse 4. He who has a clean hands and a pure heart, he who has lifted up his soul, he who does not lift up his soul to the adult, those who doesn't practice, those who doesn't worship the adult, because they are man-made, they cannot speak. They cannot see, but our God is so merciful. Our God is so good. With God, all things are possible. So this morning, you need a pure heart, a clean hands. So you and I, we have to know where we stand before the Lord concerning our hands, concerning our hearts. Are they pure before him? Oh, beloved, it is a mindset. We have to change our thought. We have to run from sin. And with sin, it will separate you and I. So beloved, it is a tax for you and I to do what the master is telling us. We thank him for giving us a word. And the word come to correct us. The word come to prove us by his mercy alone. That's why he has given us a word. So this morning is a transformation for you and I to run away from sin so that our hearts will be pure. Our hands will be pure before our Lord Jesus Christ. We give him all his glory for giving us a message. Unto thee, O Lord, with you, all things are possible. Spirit of the living God, I pray this morning by your power that you will bless your end time prophet, prophet Kenewu and the family and also his viewers that listen to him on daily basis. May their heart desire be met in Jesus Christ, your mighty name, your word has come forth. We thank you. We glorify you unto thee, O oh Lord, with you all things are possible. In Jesus Christ, your mighty name, amen and 